All right. So we are going to look at the second big topic in 4.1 in our book, and that is angular speed and linear motion. Now, this video is just for you to um, get down some of the key definitions, and we won't be doing any problems. It's just gathering some information, getting the notes out of the way, so we can uh, talk about them on your next four-month day and do some practice problems. So um, remember with this video, at any time you can pause it, you can fast forward through it if you really want to, um, or you can rewind it and listen to it again. So um, with some of the applications that we're gonna have, um, we're gonna be looking at what's called linear speed and then um, transitioning that into what's called um, linear speed. So, for example, we have a truck wheel with a diameter of 36 inches, rotates at 630 RPMs. So, if you recall RPMs, um, what that means is uh, revolutions per minute. So, it's going 630 revolutions every minute. That's what we know about the truck. And we want to know just from that bit of information, the 36 inch diameter wheel, going 630 RPMs, we can figure out the truck speed in miles per hour. Now we're not gonna do that today, we're just gonna kind of build some of the concepts behind being able to do that, okay? Um, so the big thing with these circular motion problems is really watch your units. The units are going to guide you through all the problems. So, like I said, we are just going to be getting gathering some of the, the key information here. Um, you'll want to jot this down. Um, and the first thing we're going to talk about is rotational speed. Rotational speed is just how often it goes around every minute or some unit of time. So I have a picture here of a air traffic controller and you can see it has this ray that's going around and around. So this is going like this, around and around and around, okay? And the point I wanna make about rotational speed is that every point along this ray that's sweeping around, every point along the ray they're all gonna have the same rotational speed, okay? It doesn't matter if I'm really close to the center or far away, if I'm going around 10 times in a minute, I'm going around 10 times in a minute. So rotational speed, its units are uh, RPMs typically, or some kind of number of revolutions per some amount of time, typically minutes. Whoa. So after rotational speed, um, that's going to naturally progress us down into what's called angular speed, okay? Now angular speed, we often use uh, this letter W to represent angular speed, although it doesn't have to. Um, but angular speed is telling us how fast the angle is changing. Okay, so now I'm just focusing on that central angle and looking at how fast that angle is changing. So if I go back to my picture up here, I'm looking at this theta inside and I'm looking at how um, the, the speed at which the angle is changing. Okay, since I'm looking at the central angle um, and how it's changing, all the points along the ray still have the same angular speed, okay? And now, um, if we know the revolutions per minute, we're gonna tie it into angular speed because of the fact that every revolution, we already know this, we cover two pi radians in terms of an angle measure. So um, we're gonna use that fact um, to help us talk about our angular speed in radians per minute or radians per some amount of time. So we are going to have a unit of radians per minute typically, although it could be any kind of time. 
So we've had rotational speed, we've had angular speed, and now that's going to transition into another type of speed. But before we specifically talk about it, I want you to think about the game Crack the Whip. Now, you may or may not know what that Crack the Whip is. I know when I was a kid in northern Minnesota, we would go to the ice rink, and much like this picture, we would um, link arms, and then the, we'd go in a circle. And so if we think about um, these people going around in a circle, okay, you can imagine what's going to happen to the person on the outside, this poor guy right here. Um, I don't know. He's, he's going to have a struggle to keep up with the rest. So that was a game of Crack the Whip. Um, if you've never done it before, you could you could try it. It's uh, it's kind of interesting, but it's a good um, way to think about our next speed, and that is linear speed. Okay, and for linear speed, the the points that I want you to um, make particular note of right now is that the linear speed is for a specific point on the ray. Okay. In other words, if we go back to this crack the whip idea, um, this person on the inside, they have a lot shorter distance to cover. The person on the outside, they have a lot further distance to cover. And remember, they're going around at the same rotational speed. They're all going like, say, for example, 10 revolutions per minute. So I have to cover a lot less ground in the middle so I can go slower on the outside. I have to cover a lot more ground in the same amount of time, so I have to go faster. So the thing about linear speed is we have to identify how far from the center do you want to talk about, because points in the center or close to the center are going slower, points further away are going much faster. Okay, So that's why we say it talks about how fast a specific point travels their distance because every distance is different depending on how far from the center you are. So the further you are from the center, the greater the linear speed. You have to go faster to keep up. So you're going faster to keep up. because each point makes the same number of revolutions in the same amount of time, okay? Now, our unit for linear speed is going to be like, for example, miles per hour. Um, it could be feet per minute. It could be any kind of distance, unit of distance over time. All right, so once I know my, how fast I'm going, I can then tell you how far I've gone. I could then figure out a distance traveled um, once we know that linear speed. Now, this is the last thing that I'd like you to jot down, and this is the most important part. This is, uh, we call this the speed chart. It's how all of the different speeds um, are related to one another. And um, so you kind of have to go in this sequential order. Um, for example, we'll start with rotational speed. And I also have the units on here so that we can always keep in mind what the units look like for each of the different types of speed. So rotational speed is typically RPMs, which stands for revolutions for some amount of time, usually minutes. Okay. So I start with rotational speed, then I can transition down to my angular speed and figure out how fast the angle is changing. And my unit there is the number of radians per minute or radians for some amount of time. Once I know how quickly the angle is changing, then I can use uh, the fact of how far from the center I want to be. I can identify a certain radius that will give me my linear speed. So my linear speed would be things like miles per hour, feet per minute, and so on. Um, once I knew a linear speed, I could then use that to calculate a distance traveled by just multiplying it by time. 
if for some reason I knew um, a linear speed of something, like let's say you know the speed of your car, you could work your way up the chart um, and you could find an angular speed for a certain distance, like say the edge of your tire. And then you can use that to figure out your RPMs. So this chart just does a nice job of um, showing how each of the different speeds fit together. Thank you for taking these notes and uh, we will then be talking about these in class. We'll do some problems together on the four mod day and then we'll give you some time to practice them on your own. Have a great weekend. Thank you very much.